Good morning again. Praise the name of the living God, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome again to this Wednesday beautiful morning as we continue in our devotion this week on the presence of God. And today we are sharing on the presence of God is visible. We shared yesterday concerning the cloud that was visible, the pillar of fire that was visible. But I want us to look at the book of Exodus chapter number 14, verse number 15. The Lord said to Moses, reading from the New Living Translation, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops his chariots and his charioteers. When the glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. It is amazing that uh, we cannot talk about the presence of God without talking about the visibility of the presence of God. Uh, it is beautiful for us to be able to understand that anywhere the Lord went, he left a mark a mark of a distinction, a mark of power, a mark of grace, a mark of mercy. And so if you are working with someone that you admire, let's just give an example. Uh, by working with them, you can sense their presence, you can sense their cologne, you can feel that they were there. Sometimes when you've met with someone and they left, long after, you can come and you can say, Priscilla was here because there are some things that she left behind. Maybe that aroma, that um, bo bo body communication that you will know this and this a person was here. Now the presence of God is so tangible and so visible. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 14, Moses is crying before God. And thank God that yesterday we shared about direction because when you have the direction of the presence of God, it means even when things have taken a different position or have taken a different shift, the direction of God will keep you on course. The direction of God will tell you when to turn where and what you're supposed to do at a given time. And so the Bible says in verse number 19, verse number 19, then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of the cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptians and the Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lightening up the night. But the Egyptians and the Israelites did not approach each other all night. When the Lord is fighting for you through his presence, he has diverse ways of accomplishing his mission because he is God. And in this scenario where we are studying concerning the word of God, the Bible says that the presence of God, the tangible presence of God, came between the children of Israel and the Egyptians. Now, this is the scenario when the, the children of Israel have left the, the land of Egypt and they are crossing over to go to the other side of the sea. And Moses is crying because he does not know what to do. He needs a word of direction. And so the Lord speaks to him and says, lift up the staff from your hand and I'm going to cause the waters to part. And I can assure you there was nothing in the rod of Moses. It was the backing of the presence of God, evidenced by, the, by Moses being a leader and obeying and stretching his hand that the waters parted. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, the presence of God, the cloud of, uh, of the presence of God, came behind the children of Israel. That when the waters were parted by the presence of God, the mark of decision so that the Lord will glorify himself, so that the visibility of the power of God would be evident, is that he put a distinction and a mark between the children of Israel and the enemies who are the, the children of Egypt. So the Bible says that the cloud moved. So it means that sometimes as you're walking with God, depending on what he wants to do with you, he moved the cloud to cover them. There was darkness between the children of Israel. The side, the front side 
was light because this is the direction they needed that the waters were parted and they were walking and it was a long journey but the cloud moved behind them that means what was a shield to the children of Israel when they were walking became darkness to the enemy's camp this is the amazing thing about God that one thing could mean something to me and another thing could mean something to the other person this was light to the children of Israel but darkness to the camp of the Philistines to the camps of the Egyptians and my prayer is that once we have allowed the power of God and the presence of God to be tangible in our spaces what might be darkness to one person will be light to another person so what became light and direction to the children of Israel became a stumbling block because the presence of God doubles up as grace and still can double up as judgment. So he was judging these people who are against the children of Israel. He was fighting for the children of Israel. He put a demarcation between them. He said, let there be darkness. In the name of Jesus, my prayer for you this morning is, let the presence of God become what he wants it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever he needs to cause to stop for you to be able to move, may it happen in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever he wants you to see and the enemy may not see, may there be a distinction in the mighty name of Jesus. So the angel who was leading the children of Israel moved to the back to cover them so that they will continue progressing to the direction they ought to go and the enemy will not catch up with them. The ways of the Lord are diverse. The ways of the Lord are beautiful. The ways of the Lord are amazing. Once you have learned to dwell in the presence of God, allow him to fight the battle. In fact, we always are on the winning side because we have God on our side if we maintain the presence of God. So when he moved at the back of the camp, it means that he shielded the children of Israel. He protected them. He caused the enemy not to see them. He delayed the enemy so that the children of God would pass by. They did not know what was happening. It means that they could not measure the progress of the children of Israel because they were not able to see them. I pray as you dwell in the presence of God. May the enemy lose track of your progress in the name of Jesus. May the ways of the enemy become dark and slippery that they will not catch up with you. May you not be afraid because this presence of God can go ahead of you and can still be at the backside of your life. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, regardless of the position that, that you are in, may the presence of God go ahead of you and go at the, at the back that you'll be covered in the mighty name of The Bible says, it was still the same pillar of the cloud that moved from the back, from the front to the back. The same direction that was causing the children of Israel to see where they were going. It came back and became a terror and a threat to the children of Israel. What an amazing God that we serve. That even as we walk in the tangible and the visible power of the presence of God, the things that we have been fighting, the things that have been fighting us will be put to our hosts. To a halt as we go towards the direction of God. And the Bible says in verse number 21, And the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind that blew over the night. So at the whole night, the enemies were in darkness. The whole night, the children of Israel were, were walking. It is the presence of God that opened a path through the water. How amazing is our God? How awesome is our God? These waters were not shallow waters. These waters were many waters. But because of the wind of the presence of God, and my prayer for you and for myself today is, may we allow the wind of the presence of God to blow in the direction that will part the waters that are threatening to swallow you in the mighty name of Jesus. May the wind of the presence of God blow to the direction that he wants you to go, blowing the enemies away and creating a highway for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If he parted the waters in the days of old, he can part your waters today. Regardless of what you are facing this morning, my prayer is that may the Lord part the waters for you. May he blow his mighty wind of his presence in your issue in the mighty name of Jesus. May you emerge victorious by the grace of God in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord said to you, Psalms 114 from verse number 3 to verse number 7, the psalmist writing concerning what happened in the book of Exodus chapter number 14, verse number 15, and the Bible says that the Red Sea saw the children of Israel coming and it hurried out of their way. Mara Sayana. Another version says uh, the red saw the children of Israel coming and it fled. And I can assure you, it was not the children of Israel who made the sea to flee. It is not the children of Israel who made the waters to fold back. It is not the children of Israel who made the Jordan to fold back and retrace its track. It is the presence of God that was going ahead of the children of Israel. What are you facing this morning that looks like many waters that are going to swallow you up? 
What are you facing this morning that looks like a fiery furnace? What is it that you're facing today that you feel like it's going to drown you? Let the presence of God go ahead of you. Let it cause the waters to part ways for you. Let it cause a highway, even in a place where it looks like there's no highway. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is the presence of God that made the hills and the mountains that are mentioned in the book of Psalms 114 from verse number 3 to verse number 7. May it cause the mountains to come down. May it cause the hills to skip like lambs and like rams in the mighty name of Jesus. It is this presence of God that goes ahead of you that makes the mountains to come down and to be leveled. It is this presence of God that causes the, the, the hills to skip and to run in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us look at that Psalms 114 even as we get to the details of what the Lord is saying to us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God. The Red Sea saw them coming and hurried out of their way. You know, when the Lord has gone ahead of you with his presence, he commands even the way, the speed at which things will flee. Because to some of us, it's issues that have been a stumbling block for you. You have prayed about it. You have waited in the presence of God. You have lamented. You have declared everything that you need to declare. But for some reason, it looks like it's a stubborn mountain. But I can tell you in the presence of God, when the presence of God has gone ahead of you, it will see the presence and give way. It hurried out of their way. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, may every stumbling block see the presence of God that is evident in your life and may it hurry. It did not just live in a slow pace, it ran. In the name of Jesus, may everything that has been fighting you, by the reason of dwelling in the presence of God, by the reason of understanding the power of the presence of God, may it hurry, may it not stand before you any longer, may it see you and flee. I don't know whether you've gone to spaces sometimes when you see people see you coming and they scatter because they are doing wrong things. I don't know whether you've been in a camp where the Lord has revealed something to you and when you appear they scatter. May this be your portion this day. May the stumbling blocks see you and scatter because of the presence of God that resides within you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the water of the Jordan turned away. Another version says, Jordan saw and unfolded. It, it, it folded back. It retraced its steps. The mountains skipped like rams and the hills like lambs. What wrong, Red Sea? What's wrong, Red Sea, that made you hurry out of their way? What happened, Jordan River, that you turned away? Why mountains did you skip like rams? Why hills like lambs? Tremble all earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He turned the rock into a pool of water. Yes, a spring of water flowed from a solid rock. It is the presence of God that will bring this change in your life. It is the presence of God that will make those waters that have been uh, threatening to drown you, to stand like a heap of rocks. That is why in Exodus chapter number 15, when Miriam is singing the song, praising the Lord, and he's saying, the waters just stood like heaps. And this amazing presence of God is able to change every, any circumstance around things that had not been mentioned before, things that had not been located before, water standing like heaps. And it is amazing that in one incident, the water stands like a heap for the children of Israel to pass. In another incident, a rock is commanded and spoken to and brings out water. Either way that the Lord wants to move, allow him to move. If you need the water pattern to stand like rocks, may it be your portion today. If you need the rocks to bring out water, it is in the presence of God that all this can happen. And so he finishes by saying, Tremble all earth in the presence of God. This is what the mountain saw. It trembled in the presence of God. This is what the water saw, the Jordan waters and the waters of the Red Sea. It saw the presence of God and trembled. This is what cancer sees and trembles and leaves a person. This is what you must see and they drop down. This is what cancer, the hold of cancer sees and it melts in the presence of God. This is what HIV sees. This is what the diseases that are terminal sees and they melt. It is the trembling that comes by the presence of God that makes all these things tremble. So the writer is asking, what did you see, O Red Sea? Another version says, what ailed thee, O Jordan, that you saw and you melted, that you saw and you fled, that you saw and you gave way? 
This is my prayer and my desire that in this morning, in this devotion, by the grace and the power of God, may the tangible presence of God permeate the airways in the name of Jesus, that every stumbling block, every stubborn illness melts in the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. It is in the authority of the presence of God that we dwell, that we speak this word in the name of Jesus. It is the integrity of he who promises faithful to follow up on the word and confirm it and perform it in the name of Jesus. So I want to pray that in the name of Jesus, let every issue melt in the presence of God. Let it see you and see the representative of the power of God and melt and give you what is this stubborn issue in your marriage, stubborn issue in your finances, stubborn issue, stubborn issue in your relationships, in your workplace, I declare, let the presence of God that we experience in this altar permeate the airways and let it bring down every wall in the name of Jesus. Let every power that has been fighting you encounter the power of the presence of God and melt in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every hindrance, every blockade of the enemy, let it see the presence of God and melt in the name of Jesus. Though what mountains are you facing today? What hills are you seeing today? What are those things that need a lot of energy for you to climb? I want to declare the presence of God is able to level the mountains in the name of Jesus. Things that you saw that were a blockade that you could not see the vision of God. You could not see the other side of the life. I want to declare in the mighty name of Jesus, let the presence of God become tangible in your space that the mountains, you will wake up today and you will see they have melted in the name of Jesus. The writer is asking, what did you see? And I want to answer and I declare in the name of Jesus, it is the presence of God that the mountains will see and will flee. And I may not know your mountain this morning, but I did not come to ask about the mountain and the magnitude of the height of the mountain. But I want to declare the power of the presence of God. That is able to go through that issue. The mountains that have been there for a very long time. The gates that have stood against you for a very long time. The generational gates, the ancient gates. The presence of God is enough in the name of Jesus, to bring it down, to subject under the authority of the name of Jesus. It is this presence that we have lived in. It is this presence that we so much live in. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to declare it over your life today in the name of Jesus. Upon your mind that has been sabotaged by other ideas that are not divine. In the fear of the season that you are living in, the fear of facing tomorrow, the fear of what you're supposed to do. Let the presence of God permeate through your mind and give you the assurance that you will rise up again in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will not die but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What Jordan saw, I declare, let it be visible today in the mighty name of Jesus. What the Red Sea saw, as it was blowing as a mighty wind, I want to declare in the mighty name of Jesus, let it blow in your situation today, in your finances, in the name of Jesus. Let there be a revival in your life, in your prayer life, in your spiritual life, in the way that you used to serve God. Let there be a revival. Let the wind of God blow in the mighty name of Jesus. And this representative in the New Testament is the Holy Spirit of God who comes, who allows you to be revived again, to be rejuvenated again. The things that you used to do and you stopped doing because of the things that happened in your life, let there be a revival by the power of the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So I declare it over your life, over your mind, over your vision, over your hearing skills, over your speech, over your spirit over your heart, over your body. Let there be strength in those weak bones in the name of Jesus. May the men of God arise from their sick beds and walk again in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the wind blow. We permit you, Spirit of God, to blow in this platform this morning in the name of Jesus. We permit you, Spirit of the living God, to blow into our spaces this morning, to blow into our altars, blow again. We, we do not want just to depend on the things that we know. We do not want to be limited by programs. We just want the flow of the Spirit of God. So we give you room in the mighty name of Jesus. Blow as you desire. I command every sickness to bow in the presence of the living God. I command every ailment and every judgment of men to melt in the presence of God. Let there be a release of the fresh anointing of the Spirit of God even upon your life. What is that stubborn issue? I command it to melt in the presence of God. What is that that you feel you cannot do? I command it to melt in the presence of God. May you walk on this day knowing that you are a victorious man and woman of God. You are not a victim but you are a victor. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the presence of God make a way for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in that desert, may you go through it. 
in that place may you walk over in that place where you're supposed to die may you live in the mighty name of Jesus God bless you and keep you it is the assurance that I have in my heart that today there are testimonies that are bad that today the presence of God that we experience even as we sit in this altar it is available for you available in your pocket available in your home available in your marriage available in your office available among your children in the mighty name of Jesus let's keep talking tomorrow even as we share about another element of the presence of God and may the Lord lead you and guide you and protect you and may this bring a distinction in your life as you testify of the faithfulness of God we also open up this platform for you to share your testimony we know the healings are done we know it's a done deal we have the assurance send us through the numbers that are on the screen let us know the testimonies of what the Lord has done let that healing be a testimony that another woman and another man can come and say if she was healed I can be healed in Jesus name amen and amen